Hello YouTube. This video is pretty much uh, a follow-up on the video that I did a while ago named Is the Pentium M Obsolete? In that video, if you don't remember, I concluded that the Pentium M was not quite obsolete yet, but it was getting there. For that particular video, I used a Pentium M 2.16 GHz in the Dell Inspire 9300, pretty much one of the top-end CPUs and top-end hardware configurations for a Pentium M, paired with 2 gigs of RAM and an 80 gig uh, IDE hard drive. What we've got here is a slightly different hardware platform. It is still Pentium M class, but this uses a Celeron M at a lower clock speed, 1.6 GHz. This is the Celeron M380, 400 MHz bus. It has the same uh, core, which is the Dothan core from Intel. Uh, 1 MB of level 2 cache, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much a Pentium M with a Celeron sticker. It's running at 1.6 GHz, like I said. And in this case, we're not going to evaluate using uh, the newest version of Windows available, we're, we're using the newest version of Debian. This is Debian Jesse, version 8. Uh, the exact version number is not quite uh, in my head right now. So I'll just take a look. I think the current version is 8.7, if I'm correct. So just I'm doing a look up here on the side. Yeah, we're currently at uh, Debian 8.7, that's what's running on this, 32-bit version of course, because we've only got 1.5 gigs of RAM, and this CPU is 32-bit only. So everything works on this laptop, um, some things I had to do to get this working is uh, the Wi-Fi, I'm using an external uh, PCMCA card for wireless, I use a Broadcom chipset, it's working now, sound worked out of the box, unlike other distributions that I've tested. I wanted to go with uh, Zubuntu 16.04 at first, but uh, couldn't get sound working on that. It works out of the box on Debian 8. It's a, by the way, I totally forgot to mention, um, this laptop here, this is an HP Pavilion DV4000. Uh, originally shipped with Windows XP Home Edition, but in my case, I'm running Debian. Right, so, let me just get that out of the... Uh, trash there. So let's take a look at how the system runs at idle. Currently we are looking at a window of uh, HTOP, which is my go-to uh, Linux uh, resource manager. Here on top is the CPU usage, currently 1.4% while the system is idling. I've dropped down to 0.5. The memory usage is underneath there. We're currently using 167 megabytes of RAM, Swap is not even touched, so it's very, very light indeed. So let's close that down. So let's just see how this thing performs in Office Tasks. We're going to open LibreOffice Writer. Let's see how that goes. This is also using an 80GB IDE drive, but quite a slow one, which is 4300 RPM. So loading things up might take a little bit of time, but that doesn't really matter if the system works otherwise. As you can see, no text skipping at all. It follows along absolutely flawlessly. So LibreOffice, so office use is perfectly doable. Just for good measure, we'll also take a look at Calc. Now that LibreOffice is actually launched and cached, we can use it a bit more quickly. For this, it's also very much usable. Even if we manipulate a bunch of stuff around, no skips. And let's open up Compress for good measure. Oh yeah, that's looking snazzy. As you can tell, office work is absolutely fine on this old laptop from 2005 with a Celeron. Now, something else that's very important is media consumption. Right here, I've got a fragment of Futurama. 
you can say is a freaking meme in the intro. This is 720p MP4 video played through VLC media player. As you can see, motion is flawless. So 720p played locally is absolutely fine. No frame drops, not even close. So media consumption is all right. One thing to mention though, I'm pretty sure that uh, 1080p cannot be done on this, but uh, that shouldn't be much of a surprise. For good measure, I will transfer this video to the local hard drive. This is the movie Pulp Fiction. This is a Blu-ray rip that I store on my NAS. But uh, this has to transfer to the hard drive first. So I'm going to let this finish and we're going to run it and uh, take a look at it in VLC to see how 1080p playback uh, is handled. And then we'll move on to YouTube. Okay, the copying is done. Let's open up the movie. To keep the copyright Nazis away, we need to be very careful about this. Let's go right in the middle. Let's see if this hard drive can keep up with that. Well, actually, this is working just fine. Right, okay, apparently with the proper codec, you can even play local 1080p video on this Celeron M. Well, that's good to know. Well, like I said, the next stop was YouTube. So let's go to the internet using the Firefox web browser. There we go. Here's a good video by John Oliver. Let's go full screen. Normally, uh, we like to focus this part of the show on complex, depressing policy issues. Something fun like uh, CO2 emissions from hearses. So that's working fine. Poverty, or the proliferation of special purpose taking some effort to get to pause, so we're running 360p here. If we're going to up it to 480p, this is what happens. Districts, a topic so boring, you didn't even realize we literally already As you can see, exact... the video immediately slows down and becomes unwatchable. You can see I heard the audio just fine, but it becomes very, very slow. So you can't really go over 360p YouTube, but which is not yet the bottom line, so I guess that's good. Let's load this site at iFrequent, which is tweakers.net. So take a look at how web browsing is handled on a Celeron M. I'm scrolling through this quickly with the scroll wheel on my touchpad. It lags a little bit. I would imagine if you would use a light ad blocker like uBlock that uh, it would perform quite a bit better. Don't use AdBlock Plus on a system like this because the memory drain is huge. You might get away with it on Linux though, but definitely not on Windows, that's for sure. So, another heavy website is CNN.com. So let's take a look at uh, how it performs there. First of all, how quickly it loads. It's connecting through Ethernet right now, 100 megabit connection. The internet outside is 50 megabit, which is more than plenty. Really struggles to load a page. But if you give it the time to load, it'll eventually become usable. Yeah, now we can scroll through. It jumps and jars a little bit. Actually, quite a bit. Page hasn't even fully loaded yet in the background. It's not yet unresponsive, but it's very slow. It's still pulling data in to load a website. Okay, so now we know that it is actually capable of 
Um, you can definitely still use a Penny member, a Celeron M like this, as your uh, go-to mobile uh, DVD player or something like that. You can watch HD movies. They look run absolutely flawless. The, apparently, I mean, you saw it, but this was a Pulp Fiction Blu-ray, but that worked just fine. So that's good. Um, 720p works fine. Uh, YouTube 360p works absolutely fine. It's very fluid. Uh, office work is very nice, works very well. Uh, web browsing is very slow, though. That's definitely something to keep in mind if you're uh, encountering something like this. There's no big difference there uh, between Windows and uh, and Linux there. Linux is a bit lighter. This is more of an ideal uh, environment for a system like this because it's a very light operating system, so a little overhead. Windows 10 on the Penny Man that I did before was quite harsh on it. I'll admit that much. I revisited it on Windows XP at some point, but for now I just wanted to get this out here for this settle run. Um, is this CPU obsolete then? Well, uh, again, not really. You can do most of your things. Uh, web browsing is possible. Just make sure that you have some patience for the pages that load. Or you should just uh, load mobile version of the web page if you can uh, find a browser that will emulate mobile mode. That way it'll absolutely work fine. Um, so in this part two, the conclusion is it's still not quite obsolete. And if you run Linux, it's, it's in most cases less obsolete because uh, Office was a bit juddery on uh, Windows 10 on the Pentium M2.1. It works perfectly fine here on LibreOffice on Linux. Um, YouTube works fine on this, uh, 360p. Um, media playback is flawless. I can't test games for you guys, so that's not really possible. But even if you jump down all the way to this Celeron M1.6, you still get a pretty decent experience for basic tasks. That's the conclusion that I want to uh, address here in this part two of is the Pentium M or Celeron M obsolete. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.